Good morning and uh, welcome here this morning to Morning Prayer. I do apologise for being late. Uh, I'd love to uh, blame Facebook, but actually Facebook and my laptop, uh, I did have them switched on a bit earlier today, but they've worked perfectly today. As usual, it's just me. Um, I was too... Uh, I spent too long in the shower, probably. Um, and wasn't ready quite quick enough. I hope this finds you well in good hearts and in good spirits. I'm just going to move that just slightly, just so that we can see things and clear something else from my screen. And it's going to pop up again. Yeah. It's uh, great to welcome you here this morning on the 13th of November. Who would have believed? Who would believe it? Um, just a reminder: we have services um, at Stanton, South Marston and uh, Stratton tomorrow uh, for Remembrance Sunday. There's also um, a civil, civic, civic uh, event at I think, three o'clock at the Peace Memorial tomorrow in Stratton as well. And uh, Alvin will be leading that with other people in the community and I'll be there as well. Pussycat. Oh, sacrilegious cat, as I say. Hopefully you have the liturgy in front of you. Um, we will use the normal lectionary readings. Um, we'll use the normal lectionary readings, but we will um, use the, li li the liturgy from commonprayer.net, the lit liturgy for ordinary radicals. God, we'll get the words out eventually. Whoever decides to wake me up at about four o'clock this morning, scratching my face. So, um, yeah. She joins me with meetings at work because she sees the laptop open, I think, and she just thinks that she can join everything. So people say, oh, how cute, how lovely. Uh, four o'clock, that's all I could say. Yeah. Have a moment of quiet. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. If you have the app, you will see that there is some music there. If you have the book, it says there is some music, and it, it takes you to the back, and you can see the, uh, they have the songs all in, in, um, in musical form. And if you can read the music, then you can sing along. Um, with the app you can play it so you have this song were you there Majesty is over Israel, Lord. Your strength is in the sky. I don't always uh, look at the comment. Well, I look at the comments, um, but I'm never 100% sure whether I see all of them. So, um, 
but it's very it's great to see Ronaldo with us this morning uh, but especially great to see Christine with us um, it's great for for um, to, to see your name there and of course Ronaldo's Psalm 68 verses from Psalm 68 send forth your strength O God establish O God what you have wrought for us kings shall bring gifts to you for your temple's sake at Jerusalem rebuke the wild beasts of the reed of the reeds and the peoples a herd of wild bulls with its calves Trample down those who lust after silver. Scatter the peoples that delight in war. Let tribute be brought out of Egypt. Let Ethiopia stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient, of the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Your majesty is over Israel, Lord. Your strength is in the sky. Um, oh, if I can get to my tablet. <laughs> going to... going to use these words... Uh, so I'm going to read these words from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16, all the way right through to chapter 9, verse 7. Bind up the testimony. Seal the teaching among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord, who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. See, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are the signs and portents in Israel from the Lord of hosts, who dwells on Mount Zion. Now if people say to you, consult the ghosts and the familiar spirits that chirp and mutter, should not the people consult their gods, the dead on behalf of the living, for teaching and for instruction? Surely those who speak like this will have no dawn. They will pass through the land, greatly distressed and hungry. When they are hungry, they will be enraged and will curse their king and their gods. They will turn their faces upwards, or they will look to the earth, but will see only distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish, and they will be thrust into thick darkness. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time he brought into, con into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Natali. But in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light shine, has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors, and all the garments rolled in blood, shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom Sorry, 
and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onwards and for evermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear Jesus' words from Matthew chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy your whole body will be full of light, but if your eye is unhealthy your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more, more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can, you, and can any of you, by worrying, why worrying at a single hour to your span of life, and why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles that sh who strive for all these things, and indeed your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some great teaching there about faith and about reliance on God. some great words of assurance, some great words of our value and our beauty in God's eyes and perhaps how we should view others in the world as well. We should be careful how we read it in terms of do not worry about tomorrow, especially with COP26 going on at the moment. We do need to look for tomorrow and look out of the planet today so that uh, there are fewer worries for tomorrow. And perhaps that's a lesson for us really, to look after things today, which may ease our worries for tomorrow. But I'll return to Isaiah, and we have these words which we often hear um, in a few weeks time. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders who is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He, his authority shall grow continually wow. and there shall, be there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom 
and he will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness. From this time onwards and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So we hear those words of prophecy, prophecy uh, for Jesus, who we've just heard from. We may look around, and indeed, I've just been out on a run, and whilst I was on a run, people were mentioning it. Um, I was listening to a podcast, which was from last week, and they were mentioning about uh, Christmas trees and things in the shops. And it's easy for us to say, oh, Christmas is getting earlier and earlier. Christmas is the time where we celebrate Jesus coming to earth to be with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Yes, Christmas trees going up in the middle of April or the middle of August might be a bit too soon. But actually we should be celebrating, remembering Emmanuel, not just once a year, but all the time. And as we're building up to Advent, as we're building up ultimately to Christmas, we remember that a child has been born for us. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And his throne shall reign forever. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness. That's something to remember and celebrate more than once a year. Your majesty is over Israel, Lord. Your strength is in the sky. It's not just within the um, daily prayer liturgy and the uh, other bits that we read where we find long words. John Scotus Eurigena, a 9th century Irish monk, wrote, Christ wears two shoes in this world, scripture and nature. Both are necessary to understand the Lord, and at no stage can creation be seen as a separation of things from God. Again, at a time when our environment, our world, is near the top of the news agenda with COP. Perhaps this should ring true. Christ wears two shoes in the world, scripture and nature. Both are necessary to understand the Lord, and at no stage can creation be seen as a separation of things from God. should be part of our worship to look after the world around us. Let us pray. Dear Father, we lift this day before you. We give you thanks and praise for all you are and for all you do. We give you thanks and praise for the beauty of creation. Sometimes that beauty may seem hidden or literally clouded, but the beauty is there. We thank you for those that surround us, those people that we see those people that we love, those people that we hold dear, those people who show your image in what they say and what they do. We give you thanks and praise for all who bless us. We pray, Lord, that we may bless them Bless them in your name. We pray, Lord, that they will feel your blessings this day.
for our friends and our family, for those that we hold dear. We pray, dear Father, that they will know your value. We pray, dear Father, that we will see your beauty in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you for the creation around us, your creation around us, for the beauty of the fields, the beauty of plants and flowers. Give you thanks and praise, dear Father, for where we live, the abundance of life we see around us in flora and fauna. We give you thanks and praise, dear Father, for those things that we see, for the things that we hear, for the things that we can touch, the things that we can smell, things that we can taste. We give you thanks and praise, dear Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, as representatives of different nations of the world come together to discuss the future of the planet, sustainability, realities of economics. We pray, dear Father, for decisions to be made which are right, which are based on righteousness and justice. We pray, dear Father, for solutions to complicated challenges and issues. We pray, Lord, for solutions which do not adversely affect those countries that are already adverse, adversely affected developing countries who for so long have been exploited by others now being asked to sacrifice, make sacrifices. Greater sacrifices than maybe those whose shoulders are broader. So we pray for righteousness and justice to prevail for fair economic systems where us in the West in may be ready to make those sacrifices. Recognising that we've had we have been blessed Perhaps not always through fair ways and just ways. We pray that there will be a more just system and we pray, dear Father, that we will be able to we pray, Lord, that we will be ready to make those sacrifices, changes in our lives as a nation but also as individuals to take responsibility and be ready as a nation and as individuals to make the change and be the change. Help us to remember Lord it is part of our worship to look after and sustain your creation.
not to exploit and destroy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we lift before you those who are on our hearts, who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Those who are worrying about tomorrow, but also those who are worrying about today. We lift before you on our hearts all those who are walking through dark valleys. And we ask, dear Lord, that they may know your presence with them. That they know they do not walk alone. Guide us, Lord. Guide us in ways that walk alongside those who are going through those valleys. So we lift on our hearts all those who come to mind, and I'm going to name some of them out loud. Max, Otto, Charlotte, Hannah, Mark, Addie, William, Pauline, Linda, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, George, Bob, John, Mary, Jordan, Mary, Wendy, John, Janet, Annette, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, Peter, Alvin and their family, Shane, Tilly, Jan's family, Linda and her family, Chris, Anna, Mary, Martina, Traudel and their family, Andy, Anne, Sarah, Nicholas, Martin, Jeff and Hilary, Tom, Esme, Nilva and her family, Len, Peter and Bridget, Ken, Rose, Barbara, Sylvia, Gwen, Greg, Stephanie and family, Josie, Angie, Anne, Angela and Charlie, Ali and Mia, George, for Leslie, continue to pray for Christine, thank you for the recovery which means she can be with us now. Surround them, Lord, and those whom care for them, who care for them, those who are their healing hands, those who walk with them. Be with them all and help them to know your presence with them this day, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
this prayer in the liturgy. Thank you, Lord, for the endless ways you reveal yourself to us. We are so quick to separate heaven from earth. Forth in all things you created by your hand. Teach us that to delight in the beauty of the earth is another way of praising you. Amen. So gathering our prayers and praises into one as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray using whichever uh, translation or version you feel most comfortable with. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Thank you for being with me this day at this time. Uh, Pippa, as you can see, has had enough. She'll be back here in a minute. We get on okay. She is a blessing and I would miss her. Maybe not at four o'clock, but I would miss her. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, I look forward to being with you all again very soon. It should be me on Monday next week. Alvin's taking a well-deserved break uh, away with Alex. So I hope you um, uh, I look forward to being with you on Monday. Take care. God bless.